Maybe. Hello there, welcome to the Greenock Morton weekly update, as sponsored by McTears, the auctioneers. My special guest today arrived at Capital last season, wanting to work with David Hopkins once again, like quite a few in the Morton squad. In doing so, he had to up sticks though from his native Yorkshire to come up to the tail of the bank. As the season progressed, his contribution became more and more significant in midfield, and he is Luca Colville. Luca, great to see you. How are you? You alright? I'm very good. Yourself? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Getting by, but all right, yeah. Getting by with a fairly fresh haircut, by the look of it as well. Yeah. Um, luckily for me, my mum's been uh, having a few attempts on my hair. Um, that's one of the perks of being in lockdown, but. Uh, no, the first few attempts were very dodgy, to be honest. I'm glad you were interviewing me then, but now it's a lot better. So, uh, yeah, we're, get, we're getting there, yeah. It's pretty decent. Listen, that is a thing, actually, because um, I know you were obviously up in Greenwich and then you moved to Glasgow, but you're actually back home at the moment and have been since the lockdown. Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, I haven't seen my family in quite a while. Obviously, we've been, well, as you know, as a footballer, you don't get much time off. You only get one day off at the weekend or summer, and for me, Going home, it's a four and a half hour drive, so I'm not gonna go home for one day. Do you know what I mean? So obviously, I haven't been home in a while, um, and my family only came up to watch me in maybe like two or three games. Um, so, but yeah, obviously, when we found out about obviously the virus, we got told to go home for a week, um, which was obviously good for me in some sense because I was able to see family. But uh, obviously, I didn't think it'd last this long, which is quite annoying anyway but uh, now it was good to see family but obviously I think we all know we want football back now um, but yeah that's it really. How are you? How are you managing to keep fit then? Is this what you're doing when you're down in York? Yeah luckily I'm quite motivated myself like set myself challenges uh, what I want to do in the summer so uh, I just set a plan out ahead of me and I, I just need to keep ticking over every day really obviously I think some people might find it hard in others to with in lockdown because you don't really have a we don't really we didn't know really know if the season was going to carry on at one point or uh, when we was going back and it's all a bit up in the air still so it's hard for people to keep motivated but for me myself I think I I naturally quite find it easy um, so I've been just running every day and trying to do gym which is luckily I had quite a bit of gym equipment from. Uh, mm -hmm like year, a few years back, so I just keep using that and ticking over. Um, but obviously, like I said, it'll be it'll be tough for some people because it's hard to get motivated when this is going to be a summer and you're only breaking the season. It's hard, but uh, no, nah, I've been keeping fit, well, as fit as I can be, and uh, yeah, it's been good for me, to be honest, yeah. Good. We were speaking to Kyle Jacobs a couple of weeks ago, yeah. uh, who also yeah. had worked with uh, David before, and I put it to him that it's really quite a compliment for a player when a manager goes to another club, but he wants you to come to that club, having worked with you before. Is that the way you felt when David contacted you? Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, when I was at Bradford, um, when he first came in, I played my first game under him. Um, and we were lucky. We got beat by, I think it was Blackpool, but we had we, we did really well in that. And when he came in, he changed, obviously, the style of play. Um, and obviously, it does take a while for people to understand it, but I think I got to grips with it quite well. Um, and I think he saw something in me uh, straight away, which is good. And as a player, if a manager likes you, well, well, what more can you ask for? Um, but no, nah, I can't thank him enough, obviously, for bringing me to Morton, to be honest, because it's an opportunity for me to play games, which I wasn't probably getting at uh, Bradford as much. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's it's been really good uh, since I've came to Morton, so I can't, really, I can't really thank him enough, to be honest. Be honest with me, did you know much about Scottish football, let alone Greenock Morton? Do you know what? It's funny you say this. I, not not much about Morton, but I do. I did know quite a bit about Scottish football because my dad's just a fanatic football fan, so he knows every single detail of every single club, and he's always like saying, "Oh, it's when you go to Scotland, this will happen." Blah blah blah. So it's uh, nah. It was. It was. I think I was quite well prepared for it. Um, but nah, I've, I've really enjoyed it since coming to Scottish football. It's a. It's a bit of a change. Uh, in terms of physicality, I couldn't believe how physical the game was compared to the English game. Um, and I think that's one of the things I've had to adapt to, which might have took me a bit of time. But uh, that was one of the main things I realised when I came to Scottish football. But no, nah, I've, I've really enjoyed it. So, yeah. Quite a big move, though, isn't it? To come up from Yorkshire up to the, the tail of the bank in Greenock. And yeah. you'll be asked 
form right away. Yeah. Mm, I think, for me, I was willing to do anything for football, so I, like, I would have gone other side of the earth, do you know what I mean? So it, it didn't really matter to me, so I was willing to come to Scotland as long as I had a, a manager who wanted me and had trust in me and wanted me to play, then it was a no-brainer for me. Um, obviously, just wanted to get games and keep progressing and obviously enjoy my time there because in the day we only have one career, so I just wanted to get the best out of it. So, yeah, that's why I decided to come, really. What is your preferred position? Where do you like to play out in the park? <sighs> I'm 21 years old and I still don't know what my best position is. <laughs> That's that's the worst thing about it. I, honestly, you wouldn't believe. Like since I've been a kid, I've played in every position except goalie. So uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm not the quickest player naturally. So I'd say uh, maybe like centre mid or summer. Um, as a kid, I used to play on the wing quite a lot because I had some quite good deliveries, and I used to play on the right because I used to cut in and score quite a few goals. Um, but pff, to be honest. <laughs> I couldn't even tell you right now, but probably probably <laughs> centre mid because I can get on the ball a lot and I can I can run quite a bit as well. I think I've got quite good running numbers, so I can get up and down the park. Um, so that yeah, that would probably be it. See, back in the old day, we'd have called you a utility player, a guy that can go yeah. anywhere. You can play him in defence, yeah. yeah. come up front if it came to it. Would you fancy playing up front at all? I won't mind it. Uh, obviously, I've seen the size of some of these players in centre half, so I don't know if. Uh, that would go too well, but I'm quite a big lad myself, but I've seen the size of some of these players, especially when we played, I think it was St. Johnston, and I couldn't believe the size of some of the players. I was like, wow, these are so strong. So I suppose being up front is quite a battle, but, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind playing there at all. I don't mind scoring goals. It's one of the best things in football. So, but, you know, yeah. You had a great start at Capital. Uh, you did really, really well in the whole yeah. next year through the season. Then you picked up an injury. Uh, how yeah. frustrating was that for you? Obviously, when I say, I'll go back to Bradford last year. When I first broke into the first team, I was flying. Like, I felt really fit. I was playing every game, scoring goals. And then, like, one like, just accident, like, I can't remember. I think I put my leg up in the air and the guy just came through it. And that's it. You, I was out for four or five months, which is unfortunate. And then I remember, I think it was, uh, it was at home. I think it might have been Dundee or it might have been Inverness. I can't remember which one. Mm -hmm. um, and the same happened again a similar tackle and I just I was just praying like oh please don't please don't be the same but luckily it wasn't as bad it was only a three week for like maybe a month job um, and then I was straight back in and I was I was a really apologetic to the gaffer because I, I just wanted to play that bad and I felt like he's brought me in and I'm already looks like I've already trying to sack it off which I'm obviously not but um, yeah it was really annoying but obviously you just got to stay positive because Injuries are part of football and you, you can't help it sometimes. And yeah, uh, once I got over it, obviously I just made sure, right, this is it. I just have to stay fit all season. And then I know I'll eventually just pick up form and play consistently. And that was it, yeah. Which is what you did, actually. And one of the turning points of the season, certainly in the league, was getting the first away win in terms yeah. of league football. And that was at our growth. And of course, yeah. you scored the, the, scored the killer second goal to make it yeah, happen. Yeah. Yeah, that was, a, that was a good moment for me. Obviously, I think I've been a bit frustrated in myself um, not scoring more goals before. I think I've had a few chances, but obviously chances aren't good enough. You have to make them into goals. So, uh, yeah, it was a good moment for me and a good moment for the team because I think we was uh, obviously we were getting the results we wanted. I think it's, uh, it's everyone's probably said the same on it. It's a tale of two ends, really, like the start of the season. We... I think the style of play the gaffer brought in, maybe people are adapting, uh, getting to know each other. Obviously, it's a brand new team, so everybody's getting to get used to each other's style and blah, blah, blah. Um, but then the second half, I think around, I think it was end of December, January time, uh, we just went on a roll, really. We didn't lose that many games, and I think you could see the confidence in the team was building. And yeah, that was it. Which made it even more frustrating that the season had to get called short when Morton yeah, definitely. was really pushing for you know a chance to get into the playoffs. Yeah, I think I think in the squad, yeah, when you talk about the playoffs, you don't talk about it, but you have it in the back of your mind because you don't want to like jinx it or something. So yeah, I think I think we felt a real confidence building around the place, and I think a lot of the things we'd worked on in the season uh, were starting to come together. Um, but you could see. 
I, I know how hard the boys work every day and training is tough. It's a battle every day. You can't go in half-hearted or you would, you just won't play at the weekend. Um, and I think you could see all the hard work um, and it was all coming together. But it's just such a shame the season after we cut short because you never know. We could have, could have won the playoffs, but you'll never know. But hopefully next season, while well, this season coming up, uh, we can start off better and hopefully look for playoffs really early. But we'll, we'll see. Our automatic promotion, you don't know, but we'll see. I think certainly part of the the success at Morton, as we saw in the second half of the season, was the camaraderie in the dressing room. How did you find it coming all the way up from, let's be honest, England to Menno, Cam and Salkeld as well? You know, the two. Did they understand your accent for a start? Uh, do you know what? I don't think I was too bad because I'm quite clear, but Cameron, Cameron, even I don't understand him. Like, I, don't think, <laughs> I don't think many people can understand him, but... Uh, nah, Cameron's a good lad. He's he's a great lad to have in the dressing room. To be fair to him, um, but it was a lot of the words I didn't understand when I first came. Like it was like I and we like and stuff like that. <laughs> like I was just getting people to translate. Like what's he on about? But uh, some some of the boys are a lot stronger than others. Uh, but I think <laughs> I think now I, I understand everyone, which is good. So yeah, that's, that's all right. Who did you know, who did you not understand in the dressing room? Who's the worst? Who Nizzy, Nizzy. I, I, <laughs> I thought you'd say that. Nizzy for the first three three months, I'd say. I just didn't have a clue what he's saying. He probably thought I was being rude to him. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to offend him and say, listen, Nizzy, I don't understand like, a word you were saying, mate. But, um, no, nah, I think, like, obviously, did his interview, was it last week? And yes. <laughs> luckily, I understand every word of that now. So it shows how much I've uh, improved. <laughs> Aye, but the less said of that, the better, because he absolutely get ripped into me with my cardigan, as you can see. It's taking <laughs> effect. So it's taking effect. Right, but if, yeah, if it's not really hot, I don't know why you're wearing that. To be honest, it should be in a t-shirt. It's absolutely <laughs> boiling. Ah, yeah. uh, but, uh, but you're down in York. It's boiling. It ain't boiling up in Greenock. Does he also uh, said he's got the best taste in music in the dressing room? Is that true? Nah, Nizzy, I, I don't know what he's on about. He thinks he's fifty-five. That guy. I don't know why. He's <laughs> I don't know. Not why he's fifty-five. He's, he's, he, I don't know. I don't know if he's trying to impress like the older generation or something. But for me, it's not my type of music. Uh, I think some of it is, but each to their own. Do you know what I mean, not everybody's gonna like the same music. I'm more into a bit more dancey and rap. But that's just me. That's my prefer preference. And before a game, I'd rather listen to that than what you'd listen to. But like I said, each to their own. I said before that you're on a two-year deal, so we're going yeah. into the second year of that, and. You know, realistically, what would you like to contribute next season to the team? Do you see yourself chipping in with more goals? Yeah, definitely. I think that's the goal I've, I've set myself to get more goals and assists and play all year round. Um, obviously, if someone like Jim McAllister, for example, he's played nearly every single game and you see the effort he puts in training every day and you need to set that to yourself as a minimum because that's how you play every week. and. Playing every week, you give yourself the best chance of scoring goals and getting assists. But I know myself next year, that's what I want to do. Um, and but the main thing is we want to we want to get promoted next year, and that's the main goal. And if, if scoring goals and assists, obviously, well, it will contribute to that. That's that's all I want to do. Um, but yeah, that's what it's usually been in my game, and I think I maybe haven't scored as many uh, as I've wanted to. But I think. Maybe I didn't realise how tough the league was in terms of it's very the defence is very compact. People are well drilled and you don't get many chances. Um, so, but yeah, next year hopefully that's what I can improve on, and hopefully I can improve on that from the start by getting a good preseason under my belt, um, having good preseason games, um, and just feeling sharp so I'm ready for the season. And hopefully by the first game get a goal and just see where the, the season takes me. You don't strike me as an overly physical player, but I couldn't help but notice that you picked up five yellow cards in the second half of the season. Was that <laughs> the worst thing that it difficult to adapt? Uh, do you know what? I don't, I don't know why. I think, think it's in the heat at the moment. I've probably done a few silly ones. Um, but usually it's just trying to back up my teammates. I'll just go through someone by accident, if, if you say so. But, uh, nah, um, it's not... Obviously, I've, that's what that's what I said to you. I've been trying to work on my physical side of the game mm. um, by going in the gym. But obviously, I don't want to get too heavy. Like, I can't move around the pitch and stuff. So, uh, 
But yeah, I think uh, the five yellow cards will probably be more next year, if I'm being honest, but we'll see. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Again, nah, nah. Just welcome your, your commitment to the club. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think uh, I think when I first came, I loved everything about it, like even the stadium. Like there's, uh, I think three of the sides are just standing out there and one yes. side seated and it's just very old fashioned. And that's what I really liked about the club. It was so close to the fans and stuff. Um, Chris Buchanan, for example, he messages me most days, and he's always there before before a game, like for a game, wishing us a uh, look. And it's the little things like that I really liked about the club. Um, so yeah, that's it. Yeah, that was quite a family atmosphere. Yeah, definitely. yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that that's one of the main things I liked about it. Obviously, next year let's hopefully get more fans again. But obviously, that'll happen if we start off really brightly, getting good results, and then I'm sure. The capacity and the crowd, well, getting the crowds in will increase, and that's what you want. You want to build a really good atmosphere around the club, and I'm sure that'll move, like go to the, the the place as well. Like the the place will be buzzing, and obviously, I know when the football team's doing well, the place is usually buzzing around. So, uh, yeah. I so we can start that off next season. Yeah. And one of the reasons you adapted so well, I think, is because, as I mentioned uh, early on, you moved to Glasgow. Um, yeah. But you've moved in with Lewis. Is yeah, that <laughs> yeah it's, it's been all right to be honest. He can translate for me if I don't understand. So he's been a good, he's been a good guy to go in with. But uh, I've never seen a guy who eats so much fish in my life. Like I've, I've never <laughs> seen. I think I think that's a secret to his throwings. All his all his fish <laughs> goes to his throwings. But um, yeah, he, he look, that's that's one of the things I've learned about Lewis. He loves he loves a good fish on a on a night time. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's been good. I mean, I, I can't. Uh, Lewis is a good guy. He's my. He's similar. He's similar in my position. He's a young boy. He's breaking, and he wants to have a career. But uh, same again with him. I've seen how hard he works. He's such a strong boy for his age, um, and he's a great guy as well. Really passionate. Wants to play for Morton, and I'm sure he'll have a a great career if he carries on how he is. But now nah, Lewis is a great lad. But it's just his fish. Like he stinks out the stinks out the apartment, and he's just. <laughs> I've never, I've never seen anyone eat so much fish and rice. He just loves it. But, yeah. but you see, he's he's from Dunoon, so I mean, he's probably thrilled to see a colour television and a microwave oven and things. Yeah, yeah, he's he's still living in. I don't even know. He's in the past, but <laughs> I, know, I still call him the Scottish Rory Delap. I've never seen anyone throw the ball so far like him. It's funny. As a potent weapon, isn't it? Ah, uh, yeah. It's, well, for us, it's a good threat. I think we have some quite physical players. So obviously, when we get our defenders in the box. First thing you do, you just look at strapping. You just you know what he's gonna do. He's picking that ball up and he's throwing it in. So, nah, I think it, that's it's an asset to have. And don't get me wrong, you can't you can't diss it because it works. Like if you get the ball in the box, it's gonna cause more of a threat than just a small throw in. So yeah. Well, look, it's been great talking to you today. Thanks for joining us on the Green. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. As sponsored by McTears, the auctioneers.